Hey everyone, my name is Simon, and in this video, I wanted to discuss program and case management within the Salesforce nonprofit cloud. The benefit of program and case management is that it allows a single view of your clients, services, and programs, which helps service providers manage large caseloads while maintaining personalized care, ensuring everyone's needs are fulfilled. To kick off this video, I want to touch upon case management. Let's meet a current client, Joe Williams. We wanna check in to see how Joe is doing, whether she is progressing accordingly or has any issues and needs we can help address. Let's take the role of a case manager, Simone Park. Simone is working with many clients and starts her day by logging into Salesforce to better understand her clients, make updates on services received and define next steps to take. She will be our example as we walk through the demo of managing your programs and clients in the nonprofit cloud. We will take a look at the ability to see holistically across multiple programs, cases, goals, and services. As a case manager, Simone can help her clients address any issues they may be facing along the journey, as well as identify steps to take to find program success. Awesome. Now that we've logged into our Salesforce instance, what we can see here is a homepage designed for the work you do as a case manager. It is a jumping off point where you can get up to speed on what you need to do for the day. For example, any upcoming tasks, events, recent sessions, and even recent incidents with your various clients. The incidents component on the left here surfaces any incident details involving your clients that may require immediate attention. We see here a list of incidents in which you can drill into deeper to find out more details without navigating anywhere else within your Salesforce environment. For example, if we click on the workshop no show here associated with Joe Williams, we can look into more details about this particular incident. However, there are times where you need to know more about this incident and find out more context about it. To do so, hit the incident details button on the bottom right, in which a new page would surface. Here, it provides you more context around this incident and better prepares yourself for next steps to mitigate any future incidents. From this page, you can also click into Joe's contact profile on the top right here. And from here, a new page would surface in which Joe's contact page uh, allows you to get up to speed on what's happening specifically with her and that you can help prepare for any upcoming appointments or phone calls with Joe. You could also have several different clients you're working with, all of whom expect personalized interactions. This is purely a client snapshot to help you quickly get up to speed on all things you need to know about Joe. For example, you see a photo, some demographic and contact info at the top here, and of course, other information that is crucial for other users to know when working with Joe. As you can see here, Joe is allergic to peanuts, which is a key information that can be passed on to other users. As we scroll further down the page, we can see at a glance, a view of all the program engagements that we have had with Joe. On the right here, we can also see a count of various related records associated with each program engagement. One of the primary functions of a case manager like Simone are the day-to-day -day interactions with her various clients. Simone wants the ability to capture these interactions in the form of notes that she can share across her team who works with Joe to have more transparency into relevant information. Let's say Joe has just had a call with Simone uh, discussing various information about a transportation workshop. Simone wants to capture everything that happened within that call. To do so, she would click on the new note icon on the right side of her screen. A new tab will pop up and on the left side, we can see um, the various uh, notes that we have drafted in the past. And on the right side, we can see a blank slate in which we could populate our new note. First off, we'll select the proper record type and we'll fill in a subject that's appropriate for this new interaction. For example, we can call it a transportation issue workshop reschedule. 
And then we'll make sure that the right client is selected for this note, in this case, Joe Williams. And we want to fill in other critical information such as interaction date and the type of interaction. So for in this case, we'll put in today's date and we'll change the in-person meeting to a phone call. One point to note here is the button on the top right called draft. When this button is noted as active or checked off, the note will auto save, meaning that you can leave at any time and come back and the note will, will still be saved at the current point. Lastly, you can also add in tags to your notes to make them easier to find when you need to review them later. For example, I can add a tag like transportation as well as a workshop. And then finally, you can add in the body of text that will provide more context into this interaction. Um, here I have a pre-written out note, but in your case, you may be filling out something that is completely net new. Now that we have all the information filled out, you can see here there is a saved icon indicating that this is a saved note. So with all this rich contextual history of information in notes, you can also filter by any tags like I've mentioned previously. For example, I can click on the filter icon up on the top right, and I can search for any notes that has a particular tag. Um, for example, I can put in transportation under a tag. Closing this, I can see all of the notes that I've previously entered that has the transportation tag associated with it. 